Mr. Speaker, I rise to oppose adoption of the report and want to call your attention, members, uh, to um, a letter that I delivered this morning to Speaker Zellers related to a violation of open meeting laws and other House rules regarding the adoption of this conference report by the conference committee. Members, you may not uh, be aware or follow this very closely, but Rule 6.23 of the House Permanent Rules requires the Speaker to investigate any alleged violation of the open meeting provisions of the House Rules and the Joint Rules in response to a written request. That written request has been delivered to the Speaker. Members, the facts are that on uh, May 14th, the Saturday, was the sole meeting of the con conference committee for Senate File 509. The only people in the room during that conference committee meeting were the conferees, a DFL researcher who received a phone call from Republican staff, Dan McGrath and his spouse from Minnesota Majority, an IT consultant who has worked with Representative Kiff Meyer on this bill, and the conferees. No one from the Secretary of State's office was present. No opponents of the photo, of the photo ID bill were present. And no notice of the conference committee meeting was sent out on the committee listservs. In addition, Language in the conference report on pages on page 12 related to residential facilities, including group homes, battered women's shelters, and veterans' homes. Language was inserted into the conference report after the, the meeting of the conference committee adjourned. There was no vote by the conference committee. There was no discussion by the conference committee of this language. In fact, the, the amendment that was drafted for this language is coded 509A14, and the date and time stamp on that amendment is May 16th, which is two days after the conference committee had its single meeting. The language was inserted in the conference report. The language is in the conference report that's in front of us. And inserting language in that way is also in violation of our House rules. Finally, members, joint rule, joint House and Senate rule 2.06 requires that conference reports may only include, quote, amendments that were referred to the conference committee, end quote. The language in the amendment that was included in the conference report was never passed by either the House or the Senate. So that language also is in violation of the House rule. Now, members, typically a point of order would be required and would be in order for language inserted in a conference report that had not passed either the House or Senate. And language that was adopted by the conferees in the report without a public hearing, without taking any kind of vote that was inserted into the report after the meeting adjourned, would also be subject to a point of order. But I chose to request an investigation of the open meeting <coughs> violation, Mr. Speaker, because of the fact that no notice was given for the meeting. Members, this is very disturbing. We all know that photo ID is a very contentious issue. There are strong feelings on both sides. Perhaps more importantly, photo ID affects the right to vote, a fundamental right. And while we might disagree on what this bill does to photo ID, to, I'm sorry, does to our right to vote and how it affects our right to vote, I think that we can all agree that any bill that in any way could be seen to uh, a, not, I, won't, I don't want to say a bridge because I, no, is my point of view that affects the right to vote should be given the, the most possible public notice of hearing, of sunshine, of transparency. And 
when we see a conference report come to us with language passed by neither body, with language that was not adopted by the conference report after a single conference committee meeting that failed to provide notice to all of the, to the parties interested in this bill, I think it is absolutely essential that we not adopt this report. And I think it is crucial that the speaker follow up on the request under 6.23 and investigate the matter. But today, pending that investigation, we should not adopt the conference language. We should send this bill back to the conference committee and, they and the conferees should take public testimony and have a public meeting about this language. Have the people that this affects, veterans, the homeless, dis uh, battered women, have the people who this language affects have a chance to weigh in and, and, and tell us what it does. So, Mr. Speaker, I request a roll call on the adoption of the conference report. Seeing a roll call has been requested. Seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. The gentleman from Hennepin. Mr. Speaker, I would requestfully respect that all members vote no on adoption, and we can take this bill up after we have had time for a public hearing. Discussion? <clears throat> to the conference report. The lady from Sherburn, Representative Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Um, this is not accurate. The conference committee was conducted in accordance with House rules, as conference committees require. Uh, matter of fact, the DFL researcher uh, was notified by our staff at 1 p.m. and requested to inform others as well, was given personal knowledge and informed and it was placed up on the website shortly after as well but the extra effort was made to be sure that they would inform and that they had that information uh, the uh, language as i stated in the opening the language in the house uh, was the same as when it left this body uh, the listing of residential facilities in the senate was voted on and uh, uh, it is a conference committee that is able to take provisions, and we did so. We took the language of the House without change in that language. We took the listing of the residential facilities without change in that language, and individual conference committee members were informed and given information and the language of the amendment. It was a discussion that we had as well in the conference committee and so, Mr. Chairman, I urge a no vote on this motion. The gentleman, the gentleman from Hen Hennepin, Representative Winkler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I just want to uh, inform the body that I clarified and got confirmation from the DFL staffer who received that phone call. It was at 2.30 in the afternoon. It is not the responsibility of DFL staff members to inform the public of when meetings are to occur. And in combination with the failure to notify people of the conference committee by the listserv, which is the traditional way of informing people. And in fact, members, you should know the House rules say that to the extent possible, you should give 24 hours notice. And we understand that in, during the busy times of the session, it's not always possible to give 24 hours notice but it is not sufficient to give notice by calling a DFL staff member. And furthermore, members, after providing so little notice of a meeting, it is certainly not sufficient, and, and it's highly questionable if, we've, if we have fulfilled our basic obligations to allow the public to provide testimony to adopt, to adopt conference committee language without any kind of public testimony. Members, I think this is a real, que a real question about <clears throat> this body's commitment to openness and to transparency and to allow the public to weigh in on bills that affect their basic rights. Mr. Speaker, I think, it, I think a red vote is the only responsible vote today.